Hey, all Bleeds fans, this is the main cast uh, where we review the week, or in this case, the last two weeks, as we didn't have one last week. Coming up on the show, uh, we talk about Man City, the under-23s, became champions. There was uh, no room for racism campaign. The European Super League is something that happened as well. We played Liverpool in a match, and we'll also have a, another Leeds band called The Frantics, on the show and we will of course look ahead to manchester united if you're a leeds fan and you like leeds Leeds united content you might as well subscribe because that's what we do and uh, you'll get a notification if you ring that bell and if at any point during this video you are enjoying yourself and you like it please give us a thumbs up that'd be great the following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. Any references to actual people are wildly inaccurate. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock Podcast. Welcome back to the Roaring Peacock main cast. On this week's main cast, we talk about Beating Man City with 10 men. We talk about the under-23s winning the Premier League 2 Division 2 Championship. There's the No Room for Racism campaign. Something called the European Super League happened. I don't know. Did that happen? Who knows? No, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we do with Liverpool. about this. <laughs> right. News to Barney. Um, we <laughs> do with Liverpool 1-1. And we'll also have the Frantics coming up on the show. Another new local Legion... Legion I... <laughs> To the new local band from Leeds, um, not uh, affiliated with the club. And we'll also preview the Manchester United game. My name is Adonis, and you know me as at the Adelites on Twitter. Joining us to discuss all of this and much more is at Sam Ward LUFC. Hello. The Warden of the North. And uh, Barney, do we have a nickname for you? Nothing we do, do we? Yes, we've got a, a new one now. It's at Barney LUFC 21. Right, Ooh. at Barney LUFC 21. There you Did go. Did you get your yeah. scores taken off you or something? No, they're, yeah, they're all <laughs> taken off me, yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> a naughty boy. All right. Um, so first up then, uh, let's talk about Manchester City. We were at the Etihad. Etihad? Etihad. And we were down to 10 men and we won 2-1. Um, Sam, how was that? Yeah, I mean, my thoughts on the match review were pretty much instant after the game, weren't they? Um, but yeah, absolutely brilliant. If um, you haven't seen the match review, we'll put a link up here. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere Barney? on the top. Oh, where, where do we start, mate? I mean, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, we just we went toe-to-toe with probably the best team in Europe at the moment mm. with 10 men. And Stuart Dallas just gets better and better each day. I mean, to talk about Ballon, he should be Ballon d'Or now. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. He's been absolutely fantastic. Mm. And just the fact that we sat back in the 45 minutes in the second half, we just knew we just needed that one ball, that one ball, and we would have hit them on the break. And the fact that Alioski actually made the right pass for once, it's probably one of the first times I've actually seen him do that. I was like... What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what a ball it was! Oh, such a nice pass on the outside of his left foot as well. It was yeah. still perfect. It was wonderful. Yeah. Speaking very, about very Dallas, nice. I mean, you wait for a Leeds-born lad to 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 get to the international level, and then all of a sudden, you two come at once, Dallas and Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> Under 23s then uh, were champions. I don't know about you guys, but I, I don't remember ever really watching. Leeds academy sides before before this before I this mean, last I, couple of I seasons. Mean, I think for so long it wasn't even an option, was it? When um, mm. you know it hasn't been an option to even get on board or to watch them, and and now it's it's so good because Bielsa obviously transitions the players into the first team really well. So you are really invested in it because Bielsa just uses it so much. So yeah, it's really nice to just be on board with it and to to see him to see him win. I mean, now they're in the, with the big dogs and who knows how far they could get because we have some real talent, don't we? Some serious talent. I think for me, it's the fact that when you watch the under-23s, it's just like watching the first team. Mm. You see, there's, there's such a progr- 
it's it's exactly the same and it's really exciting football as well. And yeah. when teams play us in the under twenty threes, they look they're like they look so out of the depth already. And and obviously it's our first season in, in that in that league as well. And we've just smashed them out of the park and we're back in the in the big time. So fantastic achievement from Jackson considering that his first game he got thrashed seven nil, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, he did, yeah. So it's fantastic. Okay. Um no room from racism. Um, are we doing enough about racism? What can we do as obviously three white boys from the north of England? <laughs> well, I I actually think that we can do a lot because I don't think that it's you know black people or minorities who are causing racism. So I think it's definitely uh, something to do with the white community, and I think that we should be doing more, and we have to be doing more. But I just don't know what. Do, do you guys have any thoughts on that? I mean, I think we can start with social media being being the big one. I think more needs to be done with racism on there. I think these big companies, Twitter, Facebook, need to take more responsibility on there. Um, and of course, the people on there need to take more responsibility. But I've done about YouTube. I feel like some people that say some horrible things on Twitter, especially, just don't get, you know, they, 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 nothing ever happens, does it? Um, and I think especially now we're all inside. I mean, not not so much anymore. We're getting out now, but, you know, everyone's on Twitter and everyone's got an opinion. So I think more needs to be started off there. And then maybe once people start taking it seriously on there, it'll filter down into society. I don't know. Like you said, Donny, I don't, you know, what, what can we do? It's, it's, it's something that needs addressing seriously. Mm. I think for me, it needs to start from the top. Um, there's... Racism in the FA, in the Premier League, um, it's all very well doing a campaign once a season. Um, also, I mean, it's getting to a point where some teams aren't even taking the knee anymore because they just think it's just a publicity stunt. Mm. I think I think sounds right about the social media side of it. A lot of people, it's, it seems to happen more on Instagram now than Twitter mm. because footballers don't, engaged on Twitter as much as the use of because of the abuse. So people have switched to Instagram and start sending DMs to black players. And I think sometimes it is just for people to be a little bit edgy for some reason to get that five minute attention, which I do not get whatsoever. Why why would you want to do that? And I think the fact that players are actually calling them out now, screenshotting those DMs, calling them out. And I think the social media companies and also the clubs need to do more maybe with their finances to say, right, let's find these people and let's get them. They need to be called out. They need to be held accountable because at the moment they're not held accountable. And it's so easy just to set up an, a new Twitter account straight away, a different number, and you're back on again. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree. Okay. Uh, the main topic then, European Super League. Um, it was, you know, when we played Manchester City, um, the European, the Super League was just a, a, a glint in the in their chairman's eye, um, but uh, by the time we played Liverpool, it was it was basically all almost all blown up. You know, I mean, <laughs> within within two days, I think um, Rodrizani called it the one day league. Uh, <laughs> um, He's been funny on Twitter. <laughs> the Super League. Um, I just want to. I would just want to start this off. Um, with with some facts, um, so uh, absolutely, you know, trivial data here. So the gross financial and transfer debt, twenty nineteen twenty for these uh, twelve clubs. So Tottenham Hotspur, nine hundred and seventy million pounds in debt. Barcelona, seven hundred and four million pounds. Manchester United, six hundred and seventy five million pounds. I think you know where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, I can't remember the, the exact figures of where Leeds United were um, in debt. And that's not, we're not even talking total debt. If you look at the total debt between these 12 clubs who were the founders of the, uh, the brief spark that was the European Super League, 7.4 billion pounds in debt between them. Um, with um, Spurs and Barcelona, obviously, the, the ones who are over £1 billion each. Um, 
and they said it wasn't it's, about money. It's mental, isn't it? <laughs> it literally, just it's, when you're saying them numbers, it's like, fuck hell. That, yeah, just, that's like a nation, a nation's debt. Yeah. Right. Just, just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were punished uh, heavily for, for being in debt, and I don't think we were we were anywhere near those kinds of levels. Um, and we, as the fans, paid the price. Um, Sixteen years outside of the Premier League, um, which is ridiculous for a one club city as big as ours and a, a club as big as ours with the history that we've got as well. Um, so, firstly, I want to ask you guys what punishment should these clubs get good money from my point of view um i think they need to be banned from europe for two years with a one-year suspension Mm -hmm. a fine which i don't really know how much a fine would be because it seems to be that money doesn't mean anything to them Mm -hmm. but a fine that's set that is given back to grassroots and through the pyramid Mm. um I don't think a points deduction means anything because with the players that they've got, it's quite easy to get on a run and then they're back into the top six again. I think you need to hurt them financially. I think you need to you need to say it, it, there needs there needs to be some sort of punishment because I mean we'll, we'll go we're probably going to talk about that obviously with the the Spygate we got fined two hundred thousand pounds because of the spirit of the game, in the spirit of the game. Right. What this top six, what the, the apparently the top six have done is in is not in the spirit of the game. Yeah. There's a, there's a role in the Premier League where if they do want to set up a competition, they need to talk to all the members about it. Yeah. And haven't spoken to any members about it. Mm-hmm. I think the, the big issue here is it's not just the top six, the big six in this country. I think that it's been driven by the Glazers, but also by Perez, who mm. seems to be just like a drunken man at the moment. He's off his sits with what he's been saying. Right. I think with what's happening in Italy as well, there's a lot of conspiracy theories there, and it's all got a little bit messy. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's been a bit of a rambling old grandpa, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> On the old port. Yeah, exactly it. <laughs> Sam? I mean, I think before we discuss any sort of punishment, I think it needs to be done quicker than it usually is because I feel like when someone fucks up with financial fair play or something, it's it's a year or so before it even gets resolved. And I think with this, you need to hit him hard and hit him, hit him now or for next season at least. Um, but I think definitely banning the Champions League for sure because that'll hurt teams massively. The money itself that you get from there is, you know, we'd have to, we, we all know how much it is. It's a lot of money. Mm. Um, yeah, like Barney says, points deduction, it's, you need the the Premier League are going to be pissed off because obviously, like like you say, they've they've not come through them to set up this new league. They've just broken so many rules to so many different people that it's so hard to to know what they're going to do. But realistically, are they going to do anything? Did have the bottle, so we can sit here and discuss it. But they they've got a you know they've got to grow some you know grow some balls and and, and do it because. There's no good just letting them offer this. What's that going? What message is that going to send out to to them if they want to do it again? They need to do it and do it properly and do it fast and and just re- resolve this fast because you can't have this rambling on and just taking up what it already has. I mean that game against Liverpool it's sort of clouded that whole game and what should have been one of the games of the season part two. The first one was it sort of shadowed over that and it's like well you know you, need, you just need to get it done and and uh, and get it resolved and. Yeah, I, I think yeah, definitely Champions League and definitely big fines. Um, mm. But yeah, let's let's see what happens and let's just hope that it does happen because uh, it's such a shame if nothing happened. Like, so just on the the point of a points deduction. So these teams <clears throat> since two thousand and four were given points deductions. Um, Bolton, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, Leeds United, Wednesday. Southampton, Coventry, Luton, Crawley, Darlington, Halifax, Plymouth, Port Vale, Portsmouth, Rotherham, Stockport, Wigan, Wrexham, Aldershot, Boston, Bury, 
Cambridge, Chester and Birmingham City, if these big six clubs didn't have as much clout as they've got, didn't have as much um, money or bring as much money into the into the game, do you think it would be easier for uh, the Premier League or, or uh, the FA to, to sanction a points deduction for, the, for these teams? Is it because Leeds United were struggling, uh, well, were, were relegated to, to League One? Is, is that why we got our minus 15 points yeah. then? If we'd have been in the top four and um, consistently bringing in large amounts of money and revenue um, to the Premier and we're able to threaten the other clubs in the way that these big six have threatened the Premier League and English football in general, do you think that we would have got a points deduction? <laughs> I, I think from my point of view, I think that if if it had happened to Leeds now, mm. I think it would have been different right. because the Premier League is such a different beast at what it was when we, when we first were, we were in it and we were doing so well. And then also Europe's a completely different beast. I mean, the debt that we got into was eye-watering. It was, what, nearly 200 million or something, which was mm. eye-watering. But 200 million now, that's not quite good. <laughs> that's, <laughs> not right. that, that's a couple of players. Yeah. So I think that if we were bringing the, in the finances now when we were still in the Premier League, I think yeah. we would have been okay. And that, mm. That's the difference because, like you say, Donny, these clubs are bringing so much money in to the Premier League yeah. But also Europe as well, and that's where that's where it's either you, it's your head saying yes, we need to do something, or it's your financial brain saying, "Hang on a minute, they actually do help us out a lot here as well." Mm. But the big picture for me as well, big picture. Sorry. Hey, hey. <laughs> there's a Freudian slip. <laughs> of course, the it's is... the second coup that they've <laughs> attempted this season. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the yeah. thing is, sir. Uh, there's too many authorities in this country that look after football mm. with different views on what should be happening. So we've got the FA, we've got the Premier League, and then we've got the EFL as well. Right. And they will, a lot of them will have different opinions on what, what needs to happen. Mm. Because there's that talk of banning UEFA, that was saying banning the international players from international duty. Right. The FA are going to say, hang on a minute, that's that's going to uh, uh, um, affect the England squad. Mm. So there's, t- there's too many different pa- hands in the pie. Is it hands yeah. in the pie? It works. <laughs> as long as uh, as long as it's not uh, a early two thousands American film, I think it's only <laughs> hands. Yeah. You'll have to uh, send me that pitch. Uh, yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you t- touched briefly upon it there. We we did uh, talking about. The amount of money that they bring in. What was it? What was this all about? It was a, it was about money, wasn't it? And what 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 is the premise that they're kind of that read read between the lines and see there's not enough money for them. That's why they justified this. Um, the reason why the, there's not the, enough money for them. Sorry, come. If the revenues, I'll just go through it very quickly. Um, Manchester United, five hundred and eighty million euros. Um, in the 2019-20 season, this is Liverpool 558 million, Manchester City 549 million, Chelsea 469, Spurs 445, Arsenal 388. I mean, how Arsenal Football Club get 388 million euros revenue in a year is is beyond me. Who's buying all these shirts? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to know um, for a mid-table, um, a mid-table and um, very below-par uh, football team who are uh, difficult to watch, and they certainly were when they played us this year. Yeah. Um, how can that ever be described as not enough money? It's just greed, isn't it? It's just pure greed. <laughs> it's that's all it is, isn't it? Like they just want more. They just want more of it, and. You know, for for Spurs, for example, they're just in so much debt because of this stadium that they've built. Like, right. why why are they doing that? Like, yeah. just yeah, it's it's infuriating, isn't it? That that teams yeah. with that much turnover are still getting in that much debt. It just yeah, yeah. it's just greed, isn't it? Mm. The, the the amount of debt that they've 
they've they've got together is just eye watering, mm. and that's why they want the that's why they wanted to settle this new league because they could pay off some of the debts, and I think that's why Perez is just absolutely like he's he's at his wit's end because he was relying on because they've just bought another player, aren't they, for ridiculous money for weekly wages as well. Right. And they've, they've, um, they've got so much debt and I think they were relying on this money because all, t- all the teams were going to receive £300 million. Pound oh, that, yeah. Each. yeah. So obviously as a club, you're thinking, oh, we, we've got, we're going to get all this money in. And then all of a sudden, no, it's not, it's being kiboshed. Thinking, oh, blood, bloody hell. I mean, Barcelona, they're what, probably the fate, the most famous club in the world. And they're on the brink of bank- bankruptcy. Uh, right. It's, yeah, it's eye-watering. It really mm. is scary. Mm. So there was no safety net for us. Um, we got we got punished in all sorts of ways, um, and it didn't work out very well for us. Um, FFP is broken. It's it's clearly not working when you've got clubs that are in that much debt. Um, it's unbelievable. And when you talk about football, you often talk about uh, aspiring to be a Liverpool, aspiring to be a Barcelona or a Real Madrid. Um, but what is success? And if success is billions and billions in debt, um, then we know that we've already we've already paid that price as Leeds fans. <laughs> and it was not success and it's not what you aspire to be. And the other thing is, for me, is that maybe I'm cynical, but I, I do see it as a win that the European Super League uh, isn't going to happen. But I see it as, as a win for fans, but m- more so it happened because of UEFA, because of the Champions League, because PSG have investment in the Champions League and because Bayern Munich didn't enter the European Super League and they, they can't because of the 50 plus one rule. And so I see it as a win for UEFA. And the only reason that we are happy about that and we're happy are celebrating a, a win for UEFA is because the European Super League reared its ugly head. And when you are, you know, not to get all religious, I'm not religious, but um, when you are comparing a demon to the devil, then the demon looks good, you know. Um, but the reality is FIFA, UEFA, um, the Premier League, the FA, um, the, the EFL, there's there's not only is there widespread corruption, allegedly, no, <laughs> <laughs> but masses and masses and masses of problems, and yeah. there absolutely needs to be reform. Um, and if you if you saw the my match review with Liverpool, I think Wiggy Wiggy said it the best in that we have to seize this opportunity now um, to ensure that there's reform comes into the game. Mm-hmm. Fifty plus one rule. Um, agents, uh, a tighter restrictions for FFP. If you simply go into billions in debt, and that's why that's the price of being successful and winning the Champions League, then I don't want to win the Champions League. No, no, mm. definitely not. No, nah. like you said, the opportunity needs to be grasped now because everyone's eyes is ever on it. Everyone knows, like you say, with your for and FIFA, the corruption that goes on. Yeah, they need they need to take a long look at it, and even the wages, everything, everything about it needs looking at because it's only going to happen again if they don't if they don't sort it out now. It'll, it'll you know a year or two's time down the line, they'll think of something else, make it a little bit sweeter for everyone, make this you know something so the fans will be on board. Whereas if 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 they've just reform, you know, sort out the whole thing, I ho- hopefully that wouldn't happen, and it would be a better you know a better sport, but. Where it's going now is worrying, isn't it? Because if if people can just do that and you get twelve teams on board, like you say, in a year's time or two, whatever it is, what's stopping them doing it again? But mm. you know, even bigger and even more money in it. It's it just it's something that needs to change massively. Right. Uh, one question for you both, though. If we're saying that football needs to reform, mm. I asked this question on Twitter the other day. Mm. Do you think fans need to reform as well, and and not as be as say, I want that player. Uh, the, the, our club should be buying that player. Our club should be spending X amount. Why aren't we spending X amount? Should fans they- are always going to think that way, aren't they? Mm. We're fans. We mm. worry. Um, when Leeds United are 1-0 up or 2-0 up or 
sometimes even 3 nil up. I'm still worried that <laughs> yeah. it could all come tumbling down <laughs> like a house of cards. <laughs> um, are we excited by a transfer? Yes, we are. Um, do we see uh, uh, positions in our team that we could strengthen? Yes, we do. Do we look at somebody like Erling Haaland and dream? Because he was Come conceived, home, baby. <laughs> conceived on the sub bench. <laughs> and, and certainly born in Leeds. We know that for sure. Yeah. Um, so I think we're always going to dream. Um, mm. And it's a bit like when you make a film, you've got a producer or an executive producer, should I say, and you've got the director and the director tells the producer what they want. I envisage this. I want this. And the producer says, well, we've got the budget for this. Mm. So it's always about a compromise. And that's where you need, you need to have, you know, Florentino Perez not saying, um, you know, we need a European Super League so I can go buy Kylian Mbappe. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you don't need Mbappe. No. Yeah. Mm. no. So you get out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, it? yeah so I, I think, I think that, that, that there are things that can change with the fans. Um, racism, we've already touched upon it. I think that that's a big thing. I think inclusivity, I think calling it out, you know, when somebody's saying, oh, this, uh, get up your puff or something, calling it out. Yeah. You know, 100%. When, when if somebody's saying, oh, you're black bastard or whatever, mm -hmm. calling that out, yeah. going to the steward and saying, this guy said that. Mm. And I'll testify and call it to and, it. And not being able to, you're not being afraid to do it as well, because it seems a bit of stigma or you're grassing. It's like, well, how do you expect this problem to not like, get exactly, resolved yeah. if you don't call it out? Like, yeah. I do it all the time on building site. You hear someone say something horrible. It's usually bricklayers, mm. by the way. Um, and, uh, they, they usually, <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> they've had a few bricks dropped on their heads. So. Um, but no, I always, I always call it out and I say, look, you, you can't say that. And, yeah. you know, they, they think I'm a bit weird for doing that and it's like no no no. you know they're a bit older than me or whatever but it's like well, how do you expect anything to change if you just think that's okay and maybe mm. they go away later on and think maybe it was right maybe that wasn't the right thing to say even if they don't think it at the time maybe they go home and think about it more um so yeah yeah just call it out and don't be afraid do it right okay but uh it mostly has to come from the top i think and the, mm -hmm. these people they need to take responsibility yeah Okay. Um, so knock, knock, knock on the door then. It's Anthony Higgs from the Frantics. Hi. <laughs> how, how are we doing? Hello, right. exactly. <laughs> I gave you the, the full double barrel there. I gave you the whole name. You know, it was a, it was a Ben White type thing. I know. I, I, I've never received an introduction like it. <laughs> I don't really quite know what to do with myself, to be honest. Fair dude, mate. Sorry, it's got that effect. So, Anthony, Frantics, tell us about your band. Uh, well, it's, you, it's... You're from Leeds? Yeah, we, it's been really sort of very, very new sort of thing. Well, it wouldn't be new, really, by now. It's just we sort of formed before the lock, just before the lockdown and started recording just before the lockdown. Well, we were all in bands before, like together. We were all in like acoustic bands and we just used to circle around York and do cover gigs and stuff. Um, and then we just decided to do an original, a, a proper originals thing. And yeah, we started recording some stuff. We've, we've got just a multitude of songs. We didn't think of doing it before, um, like a, an originals band. And we just did it. And then the world went to shit. So we've not been able to gig or anything yet. No, um, I mean, you say you say you haven't been around for very long. You, you you've been around before and after a whole a whole European Super League. <laughs> I know. I mean, what a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, what do you do in the band? I'm the I'm the drummer. Um, I think I think we just sort of. Yeah, looked at each other and said, "Who's uh, who can talk about Leeds United better?" And they seem to think I'd be better at that, since some of them 
some of them probably would rather support tennis than like sometimes to swear down. <laughs> you, have to, you, have to ask, you have to ask some of them, like, name me five players now before you watch this game with me. <laughs> no, no, they're, not, they're, they're all leads. They're all, they're all leads. Fans have been to games and stuff. But yeah, it's, um, we are sort of, we do like to play off that um, sort of leads fan band culture, you know, like Sky, Skylights and Apollo Junction do like, we think it's just you know it's there's quite an audience for indie music in our sort of fan base. It's it's quite it's quite a nice community to be a part of mm. um, when you get involved with Leeds fans. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. All this Super League stuff of the last three days is just like it just drained the life out of all of us, isn't it? It's yeah. just ridiculous, man. Yeah, it really is. It's been hard to like focus on anything else. Yeah, life because of this is just yeah. Like taking up my whole headspace and it's all about headspace to be there. Yeah, it seemed to be like every time you looked at Twitter, something else mental had happened, didn't it? And then mm. you go 10 minutes later, or you know, even yeah, even shorter than that, and you go another scroll down and something else has happened, and it's like, bloody hell, I must have gone through pretty much every emotion I know. It as well. I was happy, to, oh, no, not happy, but I was like really pissed off, and then I was like, oh, fuck them, you know, if I don't, if I don't, don't want to be here, fuck them, and then I was like, Right, well, these guys, they're coming back in. Well, we need to ban them. We need to do this, that, and the other. And I've just, for a whole range of emotions in 24 hours, I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this for something that leads, doesn't involve leads. Like, it's really strange that something just took over every football fan's life that much. Like, I've uh, I've been on early this week as well. So I've been started at seven o'clock in the morning. And most of the announcements were coming out like half past 10, 11 o'clock. It's like, for fuck, fuck's sake, again. <laughs> and you like, get to sleep because you're like, what's happening now? And then you like, keep looking at Twitter, like, it's happened again. <laughs> <laughs> like, then before you know, it's like 12 o'clock, you didn't get need to go up at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day. Yeah, it might like, help. Yeah, it's just been mad, isn't it? Like, I'm a teacher, so it's like, been just so distracting from everything. All yeah. the kids, as well, all kids as well, hiding the phones under the tables. Like, where did the words design? How's it? Oh no, I'm meant to teach geography. Oh, yeah, no. Put your phone away. Uh, yeah, put your phone away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's just yeah, life at the minute. Yeah. But um, yes, yeah, I think with ev- everything that's happened, it's just. Um, I'm 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 happy. It's so weird that I've, I've watched. I've just watched a game against Liverpool, and it just it never felt so empty watching a Leeds game. Like yeah. we were just the band were just sat together. Like this is we're playing Liverpool at home. We've been waiting for this for 16 years. What is like? There was no talk of the game. You know, no build up, no nothing. Yeah. You know, we scored a last minute equaliser. Imagine Ellen Road. It'd have been. It, yeah. Mm. would have been lifted off and we just sat there like never like celebrated a goal of that magnitude with so little yeah. emotion it was mm. really really because I, I felt very flat in the first half but then but, but we came, the way we came out in the second half and we were just bullying them I and still- they were you know they were camped inside their their box i thought that that was victory enough I'm, I'm talking about my telly wasn't outside the window going mental. Like I, was, <laughs> I still jumped on my mate. We still went crazy. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, yeah. For, 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 for the for the for that kind of game, for that for the magnitude of that. Yeah. It, it wasn't punching one of them in the head and smashing a guitar. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> proper rock star kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, no Quick, get the drugs out, lads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of, cook off this, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, if we're, if we're all in Ellen Road, we'd all have broken ankles, wouldn't we? Like, yeah, yeah just, that's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and especially with this whole Super League thing, imagine being able to just give the whole Liverpool team shit. They, they would, they wouldn't have been able to do a thing. They would have been shit scared that whole game. Yeah, you can tell. Like Leeds fans would have been ferocious, and you know, on Sky on a Monday night, the only game on, everyone's watching that, and the whole Leeds crowd there, thirty-eight thousand. Like no worse place to go. Opinion. Is there for them? No, exactly. Yeah, best place in Britain for them to go. Leeds. Exactly, mate. Mm. Exactly. It's such a shame. Yeah. I mean, how many were out, out, outside? About hundred or something like that. And they were. I think it might be even more. <laughs> shout, shouting at Klopp, and then after the game, he was whinging on Sky. <laughs> oh, the Leeds fans were shouting at me. Oh, Oh, come on! His fans as well. There was Imagine if there was thirty-eight, thirty-eight thousand, like you said, Sam. <laughs> oh, He'd know about it then, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah. <laughs> the 
they do it in the field and just wanka, wanka. Mummy, mummy, the the football fans were shouting at me. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, well, I mean, what do you expect? Like, what did he think was going to happen? Like, yeah. I'm sorry, but they're the only ones anyone can shout at. And it's yeah. like, to be honest, like there was Liverpool fans there as well. And for Leeds, who aren't even involved to turn up and do that to you, it's like we're almost supporting the team to be against that. And it's like, what? You Anybody say, else? You, isn't it? Anybody else? You know, if it was that, if if that was Bielsa, you'd get, you know, um, you'd get a forty-five minute response as to why the fans should be praised for shouting at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, it was all my, it was all my fault. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's not. It does, yeah. isn't it? It's always yeah. his fault. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just, it's just how he got the. It's just how it can be so stupid to just have the. T- complete wrong idea of what the shirts were about I know yeah, that was yeah, well. yeah. such a wrong idea obviously we're not having a go at your team like yeah. obviously it's yeah. quite obvious it's a, it's a message to the whole game and the situation yeah. and they, just, had the, that, they had the opportunity to do that didn't they they even cop before the game they had the opportunity to wear the shirts the opportunity to say how they felt or even just wear the shirts and not speak but you know the opportunity to show they were against it and they didn't take it, and he was crying, saying that it was a you know putting it in the face or something because they're not going to get Champions League. It's like yeah, see so, the bigger picture, man. It's not to do with that. So called manager of the people, but he's been doing that a lot this year. I used to love Jurgen Klopp. I used to really like him, but this year is just annoying me a bit because they're um, losing, um, isn't it? A lot. Yeah, he's just moaning <laughs> and victimizing the victim all the time. Yeah. yeah, he's a bad loser. Um, on to Sunday bad. then, uh, Manchester United. Usually the game of the season of any season when we've been in the Premier League. I know it's been a, a while, but that was the case, we can assure you. Um, Anthony, what are your memories maybe of, of some uh, Manchester United games and how do you think a Sunday will go? Well, probably the best memory, apart from well, next to Bristol Rovers, I was at that, that game in the FA Cup and I was sat like, you know when we're in the corner at Old Trafford, aren't we? So it's the mm. corner. I was right at the bottom of the corner and then underneath was the Man United fans. I was 15, I think, and it was just the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, the, 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 the just because I was there and when that goal went in, the whole, you know, like the 80s style celebration, everyone pushing to the mm. front. Mm. Just the best thing I've ever felt and just Man United fans right below me just laughing at them. <laughs> it was just the best thing a Leeds fan could ever experience. Yeah. It was the best moment of my life when that goal went in. Yeah. And at the final whistle, I think Paddy Kisnogo came over, didn't he? With his head band on, like coming up to Leeds fans. And I was hanging over the edge, my scarf was over the edge. I was like, come on, Paddy. And then a Man United fan, as he was walking out, grabbed my scarf, tried to pull me over the edge. Oh, what? <laughs> And it's just, yeah. Yeah. I was literally like hanging over the edge, like it was about a eight, seven, eight foot drop as well. And like my friend had to like push him off, and then Stuart oh. pulled him out. It was nice. <laughs> honestly, that was honestly one attempted of the- murder on a fifteen-year-old. That oh, <laughs> really? yeah, that's solely that, just- isn't it? This guy yeah. was like fixed it. He was like old guy as well. <laughs> when when you're trying man. to when you're trying to kill a fifteen-year-old opposition fan. <laughs> That's some salt in it. You know yeah. you've lost them. <laughs> yeah. oh, I wouldn't change it for the world. It was great. <laughs> All um, about the experience, but, isn't it? So that's my experience. Mm. I went to the, I think I went to the 3-0 at home loss as well when mm. the gig scored. Or, don't, don't think that happened. I don't remember. Like, but, um, yeah, I don't even know why I mentioned that, to be honest. Like, <laughs> I was just the whole podcast. Like, you know. Cut, edit. Um, yeah, <laughs> there. Go back to the old guy pulling me over an edge. Yeah, um, yeah, that was amazing. Obviously, um, and from then onwards, I was obviously, you know, I understood the rivalry more than because I was still a young lad and I've never really seen us in the Premier League. I think my first game was in the Premier League. Mm. When, uh, I think we beat Aston Villa three one at home two thousand three. That was the first game I ever went to. And I never saw any Premier League football after that so that experience was incredible so this game at the weekend would have been I'd have sold everything to be at that game like mm. my own, anything yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so it's it, it obviously all the events and, st- and stuff has, has taken a bit of that away but now it's all sort of resolved we can sort of concentrate on the football again we can probably maybe re-engage our immersion towards a huge rivalry and a huge game yeah and um, in terms of the pit on, on the pitch, I think we've improved massively since we last played them. I think arguably the so have they. So it's that's another game that didn't happen. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first yeah. time we're playing them, weren't we? I, I didn't mention. I didn't mention it. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> it was a close game. Yeah. So <laughs> in the last ten minutes. <laughs> um, so be- yeah. before you go, um, can you can you tell us briefly about yeah about the band? Um, are you are you have you got some gigs coming up? Um, and also want to hear about the track Beehive, which we'll we'll play at the end of the pod. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, Frantics. You can find us on Twitter. Any social media platform we're on there. We're, we're recording all the time now. We've got lots of stuff coming up for the summer. Um, we've only got three tracks out at the minute. Um, we would have had a lot more by now, but we thought because we only managed to get a limited amount of studio time before the world went shit, we sort of spread those three tracks over a year. So that's why we've only got three out at the minute. Um, our latest single, Always On My Mind, oh, I always say that right. It's all that's on my mind. Lead singer's going to kill me. For you that. were always <laughs> on my mind. I know. That's the reason. It's like people are going to just search that. And like, you were always on my mind. No, it's, um, yeah, that's, that's, our, that's our latest single. Maybe uh, I... <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's um, yeah, we've, we're doing a lot of recording at the minute. We've, we've got some gigs planned for the summer around York. Um, yeah. So if you're in York, so, yeah. Um, Around if you know Stone Roses Bar, we'll be in there a lot. Yes, mate. Uh, Many a mad one in there. <laughs> oh yeah, and um, we, yeah, we're just talking to a lot of venues, um, so we'll have some stuff uh, out when we're all can actually go and see gigs again. We've got a couple of festivals as well, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, so yeah, we're just sort of like a in uh, indie rock band, sort of influenced by the main bands you can imagine Arctic Monkeys Sabian Vampire Weekend any any band like that you can sort of compare us to really yeah. sort of quite abrasive punchy aggressive sort of uh, riffs and single note riffs and stuff that are quite catchy that kind of thing so if you're into that kind of thing definitely um, yeah and just hit us up on social media and it'd be, be great to yeah connect with more fans and more people and yeah matching on together <laughs> cool man so it's Frantics that. underscore underscore yeah, because there is another band called The Frantics, which okay. seem to, to they have, they have taken the the out of their at and have just put Frantics. And right, and you've taken yeah. the underscores out of. The band. <laughs> uh, it's a war, There's baby. another Frantic with one underscore as well. I don't know. I, we we just had to make it look. I didn't want to put any numbers or anything on there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. just to, keep it, to keep it as as close to just frantics as possible <laughs> yeah okay and cool mate thank you so it's so anthony from the frantics you can follow the frantics at frantics underscore underscore and hopefully we'll uh, see you again soon yes. yeah man you thank you for coming on take care mate march on together Cheers, man. okay so that was anthony higgs from the frantics that was good he's a nice guy yeah yeah definitely gonna give him a listen yeah he's definitely a drummer off. Yeah, <laughs> that, those ring slams on the table. Oh, yeah, ah, the good guy, I like him. No, yeah, really good guys. Okay, um, so we didn't talk about Liverpool, but we talked about it with Anthony, and I feel like, it, do you have anything to say about Liverpool, Barnes, or or Sam? Just stop crying. Just Liverpool. Just yeah. stop. Right. It's always, it's always the the, the it's so hard done to all yeah, the time. Yeah. Right. That's Stop it. crying, Jurgen. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, and it just it really did annoy me that he didn't say much more on it before the game. He had a chance. Everyone's like Jurgen Klopp, one of the best in the world, and he didn't really say a great deal on it. That disappointed me. Obviously, not wearing the shirts disappointed me again, and I really didn't think there was a problem with that. Um. What else was there? I really liked the Milner Phillips mm-hmm. central midfield clash. Yeah, that was that was class. How how more leads than that tackle where they both went in for it and they were both oh came away God. smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Thing of like, oh, that's, it was, wasn't it? That, yeah. that, that was brilliant that. Um but no, it's nice to see Milner again, to be fair. He could still do a job and he was brilliant actually for them. Mm. He was really good. It was really weird seeing him and um Phillips. I mean, yeah. you know, he was I think, my age basically when he when he turned out for Leeds, and it was just, mm. you know, seeing somebody my age on the pitch, and obviously then sc- score against Chelsea. I think that's the first we all saw of him, yeah. unless you uh, saw him away. Yeah. Um, but it was just, 
It was fairy tale stuff. It was dreamland, wasn't it? Yeah. It's when you. It, it's this is when you start to feel old being a football fan when you actually see them make the debut yeah. and then you're seeing them retire from football. Right. Yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then you feel really old when you start seeing them being a coach again. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You see yeah. the full cycle of the yeah. football career. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still there. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? I, I, enjoy, I did enjoy seeing Pablo as well. I wish he came on a little bit earlier, but I hope mm. that's not the last we see of him because he needs more than that. He needs more than five minutes at the end of a game. That's really t- it wasn't tight by the end, but it was you know it was a you know very competitive game I hope he starts something like West Brom something like that where we're probably going to win or hopefully should win maybe start that and if he gets a Premier League goal I'll be buzzing for him um, yes but that's mm. what we need isn't yes, it that's what please. he needs as well he'd, he'd celebrate that like mad as well at his you can age, see we, he was you know he had some great touches he did, yeah. yeah he did yeah a couple of stray passes but yeah. He, that's always going to happen you, when you're building working your way back into the, the rhythm of yeah. of uh, the, the first team and um uh, of an actual match and also like getting on the same wavelength as your uh as, as your teammates as well so it was just like just give him some more time yeah. come on come on marcella come on, we're, you've we're, got safe. we're safe yeah. we're safe yeah we're safe we don't want we don't want you we don't <laughs> we don't have a squad for that <laughs> we don't want you we don't have a squad for it we're not yeah. going down just play pablo cool. just give us what we need yeah I don't know. It's such a shame we can't say bye to him, isn't it? I love him. Mm. Scumchester, then. Barney, how Wash do you feel? Up, how do we feel? What do we think of uh, Manchester? Wank. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester. Wank, wank, wank. wank, wank, wank. wank, wank. Manchester. Wank, wank, wank. Uh, um, yeah. To be honest, they've been quite surprising this season, haven't they? I hate to I say it. I don't think they're any good, though. <laughs> I don't know why. I just don't think they're that good still. I watch them and they're like, they're, they're, it's like really narrow to the last 10 minutes and then they score a couple of mm. goals. Like, I don't know. I think we got them this time. I, I I think, well, I think for me, I said, didn't I, against Man City, we won't, we won't lose. And I think, again, we will not lose. Mystic Barney, this- go on. <laughs> I don't think we'll lose this weekend. I think Bielsa will want to prove a point this time after losing the way we did. I'm not going to say the score because it, it hurts when you say it. Um, I think that we didn't get found out. It was just that that was probably one of the best performances I've seen from Man United under mm. Oli. Yeah. They were at it straight away and they looked, they did look like a world-class side mm. when usually they look awful. Mm. Um yeah, I don't think we'll lose. We're not going to lose. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm loving I... these predictions, yeah. by the way. I feel like you need a circus tent or something. <laughs> Barney's Bazaar. <laughs> yeah. in, his, in his red light district. <laughs> 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 oh, I hope that comes I, out again. I think for me, I think that we know that we're going to see a different performance when we play those scenes the second time around. Yeah. Mm. There's only, is there only two or three teams that we've lost twice, isn't there? Yeah. This season. I mean, when we were playing Leicester away, I was thinking this is going to be a really tough game. We just blew them, blew them away straight away. Mm-hmm. And um, I just think it's different this time. I think these players are going to want to prove a point. And these players have learned a hell of a lot. And also, we've got a stronger side this time as well. We've got Lorente, who's an absolute beast of a player. Yeah. Hopefully Rafinha's back fit as well. Yeah. And then hopefully Forshaw will be on the bench as well. So mm-hmm. there you go. There's my prediction. <laughs> back. <laughs> okay. Sam? I think I think last time the reason that they got so fired up for it really was because Solskjaer was obviously a player for them and will have played in many of the derbies. So I think he knew very much so how to get them fired up for it. Um, might be a bit harder for Bielsa who didn't play in them sort of games, but well, for, for Leeds and, and Scum anyway. Um, but yeah, like Barney said, we're a different team this time. Um, mm. Let's hope Rafinha's back because I think he could cause them some problems. Um, 
but yeah, we've 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 come on so much in this time. You know, it was December when we last played him, and that's that seems like a long time ago now, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, mm. And yeah, like Bielsa, I can't imagine he was happy with that six two. You know, he he he. I think he understands the the rivalry between us two. He doesn't need to be told it. So he'll have been hurting. Um, so Shabe Cooper's not there. It would have been a dream to to lead to lead him out against uh, against Scum at home. Shame that. But we've you know we've we've got we've got good cover, and I think they showed that the weekend. Uh, sorry, Monday. Um, that we you know we've got sufficient cover there. So yeah, I'm 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 quite confident to be honest. I think they'll be up for it, and um, you know. We've, you know, we owe him one, don't we? Because that wasn't nice watching it last time. I mean, mm. fucking stop Scott McTominay. Two two goals in the first few minutes. Like, he never scores. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> it's, that's not going to happen again. No, that's no, it. it definitely no. not. No, he turned into, like, prime Iniesta yeah, or something. It was, well, it was it was ridiculous. That, yeah, it was. Um, it really was. Yeah, I mean, just on Bielsa, he, there's a story when he was at Newell's and I think they lost, like, 7-0 or something. Hmm. Um, I think it was Newell's. And, and he... He took all his clothes off, something like that, and then um, laid down in his bed and turned the light off. And he, and he said, and then I knew the feeling of, of what it was like to want to die. So, I mean, this, Ow. you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought it was going to go somewhere else. <laughs> he's an intense man, isn't he? He's an, he is an intense. I'm certain that he knows what it means because he, mm. he talks so much about um, Rosario Central and Newell's Old yeah. Boys and and that's the big um, uh, clash, um, the Rosario Derby or whatever it's called, the Classico Rosario or whatever it is. And um, he he was saying that it did not matter that this is this is the quote. Um, if you asked the Newell's fans at the start of the season if they would rather beat Rosario or win the league, they would say win the league. But if you ask them an hour or a day before the derby, if they would rather win the league or win the derby, they'd say win the derby. So he exactly knows exactly how we yeah. feel. Um, and it will have hurt him a lot. And I do think that they, they I would be very surprised if, if uh, Scum repeated that performance because I think they were basically near perfect. I mean, we looked like we were going to concede every time they went forward. Yeah, really um, and I just, don't see that happening again, especially now we've got we've got a defence back, really. I mm -hmm. mean, there's no two ways around it. We were conceding goals like crazy, but we look yeah. we look formidable now. I mean, mm -hmm. only conceding one with ten men yeah. at the Etihad. I mean, our, our home form for conceding goals is amongst the best in the league for 2021. Is that right? I think it is the best. It's, it's well, we're a different team completely. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not, let's not be scared of them. Yeah, and and I think we've we've got some momentum as well, not just mm -hmm. in terms of results, but also in terms of playing these big teams. Um, so there's not that um, need to get the players up, up and motivated for it. You know, we're already like in that mode. Yeah. Um, the person I feel sorry for is Liam Cooper. I don't mm -hmm. think he deserves to be sitting in the stands. I think he yeah, deserves to be leading that Leeds United team out against Man United at Island Road. And I hope that he gets the opportunity to do that next season. Yeah. Because he deserves 100%. it. He really yeah. does. Do you know who I'm going for as well? A generation of fans that have waited for this scum at Ellen Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe there. Yeah. It's yeah. so gutted when you've waited all this time and you can't be there to see it. Yeah. Because that, the atmosphere is on. <laughs> it's. It, honestly, what else, isn't it? You, you, you can explain it all you want, but the atmosphere when we play scum at Ellen Road is absolutely, it's terrifying. It there's, is. Only, there's only two atmospheres that that I've witnessed or experienced, let's say it's probably the right word, experienced, um, <laughs> that have been bigger than a, than a scum game. And that's Deportiva La Coruña mm. and, and Valencia. And those... Those two games, I've never felt a noise like it, um, yeah. and um, I wasn't there. But perhaps the, uh, the 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 semi-final against Derby at the start, I think. Of, yeah, yeah. Well, it, well, it was it was yeah, it was special that time that mm. day. But yeah, but I mean, I I remember. 
But them. scum, it's all day, isn't it? Scum, it's it is, like it is. It's in, yeah, it's eight a.m. in the morning. You mm. just up for it straight away, and as yeah. soon as you walk up those steps into the cop, you can just feel it. You can just yeah. Feel it's it. a different tone almost. Isn't it is. It? Yeah, it is. It's like and a different every, animosity every, to it. Every tackle, every ball, past everything. It's just like everyone's there, just in the moment. It's yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Yeah, um, whether all was saying that he, uh, you know, because I said, you know, there'll be fans that, aside from a couple of cup games, um, and uh, obviously the the friendly over in Australia, um, there'll be basically a whole generation of of fans who have never really experienced that. And he was saying yeah. that, you know, he was like that the first time he played in in a, in a Leeds Man United game. He was in the players' lounge. They got there early. They get there early on these uh, big derby days um, into the ground to to, to prep, pre- prepare. And um, there was a huge noise outside the ground and it was shaking the, the walls and the, the tables and in the players' lounge. The, everything was vibrating. Mm. And, and Weatherall's going, hey, what's happening? Is everything all right? And one of the other players said, don't worry, David. It's just the the Man United coach getting in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it as well. It's, it's the atmosphere outside the ground. All the mm. fan coaches coming in, the team coach coming in. Mm. Everyone gets so much shit. It's like when Millwall used to come, you know, it's just so much aggro outside and it's it's, it's good. It's, it all adds to that match day experience that you don't get mm. with other teams. And yeah. yeah, I miss it, man. I miss it. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, though, with the rivalry as well, it's from both sides. Yeah. <laughs> Scum despise us as well. Mm. Yeah. They, Man City is not their rivalry. It's playing us. They know yeah. it as well. They it is, yeah. Really- yeah. For a yeah. certain age of fan as well, it, it really is. Mm. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, probably the younger ones, uh, you know, it's probably Liverpool and, and, and Man City for them purely because they they don't know what it is. They yeah. don't know what... Mm. A, you know, they'll, they'll they, sing. They, we they all hate sing. Leeds, come, but don't know why. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They sing it every game. We all hate Leeds, come. You know, we hate Liverpool and we hate City. That's their song, isn't it? We all hate mm. Leeds, come. Yeah, and they sing it every game, but they've got no idea what that is. You know, but this on Sunday it would have been the chance. But I know that you said that you feel sorry for the fans, and I do, of course. Um, but. For me, that ended when when we got to thirty nine points. I think when we beat Fulham, because I knew we were staying up. So it's fine. We'll get it. We'll get yeah. it next season. Yeah. Mm. It will happen. Yeah. It will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's it then. We've uh, uh, we've talked about Man City. Uh, the under twenty threes won the Premier League two Division two. We touched on that. Um, we sorted out racism and um, found out what we could. <coughs> Do better, more. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Basically, uh, don't be racist. Um, yeah, don't be a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not hard, is it? Yeah, really? just be yeah, sound. It really isn't hard. <laughs> um, we talked about the European Super League and how there just needs to be this seized opportunity now for for widespread reform and and the disparity of um, uh, you know punishment between clubs like Leeds United. And uh, and clubs like this big six, and hopefully um, we get that reform, and hopefully they prove us wrong with that disparity. We talked about Liverpool. Um, we were joined by Anthony from the Frantics, and of course we looked ahead uh, to Manchester United. So I hope you enjoyed that podcast. My name's Adonis, and you know me as at the Adelites on Twitter. It's a very goodbye from me. Joining us today to discuss all of that and much more was the Warden of the North, Sam Ward, LUFC. Goodbye, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week. Let's smash those scum bastards. Let's smash those scum bastards indeed. <laughs> what are you speaking all of our hearts there? <laughs> and uh, uh, Barney with a new Twitter tag, at Barney LUFC21. It's very goodbye from me. Scum! 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 <laughs> scum! All right. Come on, Leeds! <laughs> Into them! Fuck them all! Get it to them! Um, Beehive, it's, yeah, it, it's quite a, again, it's probably one of our, our more rocky songs, my more sort of punchy songs. Um, it's, it's like, it's, I think the lead singer wrote it, it's about a typical kind of thing about breakup and that kind of thing. 
Um, so something you can everyone can sort of relate to. Quite, it's got a twist in it. So it's it starts off quite slow and then it's got like quite a big ending. So if you're bored after a minute, just keep playing the song. <laughs> it gets bigger. All right. So yeah, give it give it a try. Most of our stats come from LUFC Stats or LUFC Data on Twitter. A very special thanks to Barney Stewart, Clifford Ewan and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon and Rob, The Light Show and all our family and friends. So many games to play, don't care what's on your mind.